The problem with writing about the science of UFOs is that there's very little science to write about. Studying UFOs has always been a bit of a fringe topic for a variety of reasons, but it shouldn't be that way, because UFOs represent some very real issues for flight safety, national security, and scientific inquiry. This is especially true when the UFO event involves a pilot, and most of all when it's a military pilot. If someone in a fighter jet can't identify something they see flying around their plane, then we got a problem, regardless if it's a Chinese drone, an optical illusion, or an alien spaceship. But for scientists, military UFO events are not very useful because a lot of the information is classified. In particular, radar information, which gives the best indication of unusual speeds and maneuvers, has not been released in any useful form in any of the UFO cases from the US military. So with military UFOs, we are reduced to doing analysis on blurry videos and anecdotal accounts from pilots. You can still get a surprising amount of data from individual videos, allowing us to do relatively sophisticated 3D reconstructions, and this is something I've been doing for several years now. The famous gimbal video, which looked like an actual flying saucer, turned out to be an optical effect, a glare just obscuring a hot object, and it was only rotating because the camera was rotating, maybe just a distant plane. The go-fast video turned out to be going slow, maybe just a balloon drifting in the wind. The tic-tac video looked like an object moving around, but it seems like that's all camera motion, again, possibly just a distant plane. This green triangle looks like a flying pyramid, but actually it's just a camera artifact. The flashing light is probably just a plane. Most of the triangles are actually out of focus stars. But in all these military cases, we don't know exactly what they are because we don't have access to the classified data. You'd hope the military has done some good scientific analysis with their classified data, but we have little indication of that. They took two years to figure out these green pyramids, but internet investigators figured it out in just two days. UFO reports from civilians are unencumbered by military secrecy, but we still lack any kind of rigorous scientific framework. Commercial pilots have the best views of the sky, but are discouraged from filming in the cockpit and many feel that reporting sightings will be harmful to their careers, so we only get partial reports. Even so, again we can do quite sophisticated analysis. One example is the so-called racetrack UFOs that many commercial pilots have been reporting. These are bright lights that fade in and out of visibility, often near the Big Dipper to the north. One such case is this video. Filmed using a night vision camera, it shows an unprecedented number of UFOs. On the Metabunk forum, we recognize this as looking like Starlink satellites, briefly reflecting the sun near the horizon. But the video was anonymous, without an accurate date and without a location, so it remained unsolved for several months. One clue was these blinking lights. Metabunk user Flarky determined that these were warning lights on wind turbines. He used a public database of turbines to export their location to Google Earth, then looked around until he found a match giving a rough location. We could then use the stars to figure out what direction they were looking in and roughly what time of day it was. But without an accurate date, it was very difficult to figure out exactly what we were looking at. The breakthrough here came in two parts. Firstly, I wrote a full 3D simulation of stars and planets and added an accurate rendering of Starlink satellites using the public data supplied by NORAD. This allowed us to try to match the Starlink patterns in the video. But without a more accurate date and location, this still proved very difficult. Finally, Flarky looked at the history of lightning storms in the area using a public database. Widening the search window, he found a much better fit for the weather a few days earlier than we'd been looking. The accurate date allowed us to identify a likely candidate for the plane the video was filmed from. Then in my simulation, I attached the camera to that plane, adjusted the start time of the video and some of the more distinctive configurations lined up, and bingo! We've now identified the exact Starlink satellites in the video down to the second, using a variety of public data and a lot of hard work. Accessible public data is key. If we had the flight number and a date, we could have solved it in a few hours. Military cases are going to remain limited in data accessibility, so the best route for scientists to figure things out is going to be focused on public data sets and individual cases with sufficient information. UFOs are almost certainly not alien visitors. But if we don't know what something is, something a pilot sees out the window, then we should try to figure it out. UFOs, or UAP, are often mocked because of the associations with aliens and the supernatural. Scientists stay away because the topic seems silly. But given enough data, we can still do good science. 
we can solve many individual cases and we can get a better idea of what's actually going on in the sky. Thank you.